first consignment of India's first indigenously designed and developed multi-bar rocket launcher system, Pnaka, is en route to Armenia via Iran, according to Azerbaijani media Caliber News Service. A video of lorries loaded with military cargo was shared by several social accounts and Azerbaijani news, claiming that the shipment was weapons and ammunition from India and was heading to Armenia via Bandar Abbas port in Iran. A shipment of India manufactured military supplies reportedly reached Armenia after being transported by road through Iran, according to exclusive footage obtained by the Azerbaijani based Caliber News. In the footage, a convoy carrying camouflage cargo is seen moving towards Armenia through a border checkpoint in Iran. The cargo seems to be Pinnacle rocket system Kalyani TC-20 ultralight houthesers, maybe anti-tank missiles, ammunition, etc. These are speculations. We do not confirm what they are carrying on. The Pinnacle system is considered as par with US HIMARS. The DRDWA developed the Pinnacle system as a replacement for Russian grade BM-21, which also equips the Armenian armed forces. The cargo contained military supplies delivered by India, the Caliban News reported, citing its sources. The Iran acted as a transit country, initially receiving the cargo at the Persian Gulf port of Bandar Abbas and then transferring it to Armenia. The Azerbaijani's president assistant conveyed Azerbaijan's concern to Indian ambassador to the country on Wednesday. India arming of Armenia exacerbates the situation at when the time the Azerbaijan and Armenia are in a talk of peace treaty. It also hinders the attempt to bring peace and stability to the South Caucasus. Azerbaijan's president's assistant said to the Azerbaijan's Indian ambassador. The Indian armed shipments to Armenia followed intensive meetings between the military officials of the two countries since 2022. In October of 2022, Armenia's Defense Minister was on a three-day working visit to India. Moreover, in February of 2023, a delegation from the Armenian Defense Minister led by Deputy Minister visited India, where he met with India's Defense Minister. The meeting's agenda featured issues concerning prospects for expanding Armenian and Indian military cooperation, including joint efforts and broader military technical reciprocity. In March of 2023, the Defense Minister of Armenia said the country's armed forces received significant amounts of new weapons and ammunition in 2022, including mortars, air defense, and anti tank rocket systems drone as well as demining, communications and night mission surveillance equipment. The Armenian government sanctioned at least 46% increase from 2022 in the defense budget, in 2023 climbing it to $1.3 billion. On Wednesday, the Armenian Prime Minister ordered to allocate an additional $6.5 million to the country's defense ministry. In the meantime, some analysts claim that the certain countries, including India, have been attempting to fill the void in Armenia's arms imports created by its largest supplier, Russia, as Russia facing international import export sanction and the failure of war in the Ukraine. According to the estimates of Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, Russia was the largest exporter of major arms to Armenia from 2011 to 2020 supplying nearly all of Armenia's major arms during the period. It looks like, like every other country, it's a defense deal between India and Armenia, and India is fulfilling its deal. And what Azerbaijan is saying is irrelevant like what Russia doing for Ukraine, but Russia and Azerbaijan saying the same that Ukraine and Armenia should not arm themselves to defend or protect themselves from their enemies. So what do you think? What India is doing right on its side of the deal? Or Azerbaijan is just crying foul? In a clear message to an aggressive China, the leaders of the Quad Group, including Prime Minister Narendra Modi of India, 
the U.S. President Joe Biden on Tuesday expressed they are firm opposition to any proactive or unilateral attempt to change the status quo on the call for the peace settlement of the dispute without resorting to threat or use of force. During the second in-person meeting of the Quad leaders, Indian Prime Minister Modi, U.S. President Biden, Japanese Prime Minister Fiamma Kishida, and Australia's newly elected Prime Minister Anthony Albanese exchanged views about developments in the Indo-Pacific region and global issues of the mutual interest. The summit took place at a time when the relationship between China and the Quad member countries had become tense, with Beijing increasingly challenging democratic values and resorting to coercive trade practice. The relationship between India and China nose dived after the East and Ladakh standoff in 2020, following Beijing's moving thousands of troops to several disputed areas along the line of actual control or the LAC which was strongly objected to and resisted by the New Delhi. India, the US and several other world powers have been talking about the need to ensure a free, open and thriving Indo-Pacific in the backdrop of China's rising military maneuvering in the region. It said the Quad is committed to cooperation with partners in the region who share the vision of the free and open trade Indo-Pacific. The Chinese and the Russian fighter jet carried out a joint flight near the Japan on Tuesday as the leaders of the Quad bloc met in Tokyo, the Japanese Defense Minister said in a statement. According to the Economic Times of India, Naobo Kishi said that government had expressed grave concerns to the Russia and the China over the flight, which took place while the leaders from the United States, India, Australia, and Japan held talks on their regional security. The planes did not breach the territorial airspace, the Defense Minister of Japan told the AFP, and it was the fourth time since November that long-distance joint flights with Russia and China had been spotted near Japan. He said a Russian intelligence gathering aircraft also flew off the northern Hokkaido to the Noto Peninsula in central Japan on Tuesday, calling the moves especially provocative given the summit in Tokyo. Beijing confirmed the flights in the short statement and said it was in the line with the Chinese and the Russian annual military cooperation plan. On May 24, both countries' air force organized and carried out a routine joint strategic mid air patrol in the airspace above the Sea of Japan. East China Sea and the Western Pacific Maritime Areas, a statement from the Ministry of Defense, said. The Quad leaders on Tuesday warned against the attempt to change the status quo by force, although they avoided the direct reference to Russia or China in the joint statement. Their statement referred to the war in Ukraine and warned against a range of activities which Beijing has regularly been accused of in the region. Post your comments below, and if you like this video, please give a thumbs up. I'm subscribed to our channel and thanks for watching this is WC daily think big think different bye